Hello, everyone. I am Duango AC, and as introduced, I am the keeper of Taskbot. I have Taskbot right here. You can see him sitting on top of a PVM over here. He has a Task TM32 board made by Onosaurus with a replay device uh, as a replay device, and he's also got a visualization board here. This is an NES where we replaced the lights or the buttons with lights that was done by Micro 500. On the line with me for commentary, I'm going to let Winterbit introduce themselves first. Winterbit. Go away and then, or take off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Take it away. <laughs> Don't go away. Take it away. <laughs> Wait a minute. Go away. Don't go um, away. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm Winterbit. I ran this game uh, last year, and I look forward to coming back to it soon, actually. Lower my time a little bit more. And uh, that's that's just about all I have to say about that. Um, I'll pass it over to uh, Rain Warrior, a.k.a. Brad. He is the creator of this game. Hi, I'm Brad, and I made this game. This is an awesome opportunity. We actually have the developer of the game right here on, uh, on for commentary. I, I'm so happy to see this. So I'm going to get this started right away. Uh, we're going to start this task in... Oh, this is made by Juf. How do you pronounce his name? Juf? Do you I'm not I sure. ever no agree idea. on how to pronounce his name? <laughs> I've always said Wef, but I don't know. <laughs> we are thankful for him making this. This was submitted to taskvideos.org last year and it's a pretty good run and we're going to kick it off in three two one go all right well the um the gist of this game is there are a whole bunch of different zones six different basic endings and six plus different lizards you can uh wear your um, human is randomized at the start of every match, looks like. We're going to see exactly what hair color we have in a second. Um, but um, yeah, you can put on lizards and use their abilities. This lizard is the Lizard of Balance, and uh, using the B button allows you to balance, as you might expect. It'll allow you to uh, reach higher places and uh, do various skips that we're going to see. Um, a little bit later in the run. Looks like we got short, dark brown hair in this one. Very nice. So uh, here is uh, the most mind-breaking of the zones, Void Zone. Do you want to go ahead and explain a little bit about Void Zone? Uh, so the Void Zone, mo most of the world is is connected. Like you go left, and you're one room left, and you go, you know, up, down, right. Here, uh, if you go off the bottom of the zone, you kind of wrap to the top of it. If you go off to the right, you wrap to the left. But it's not just wrapping, it's also a spiral. So you could just go, like, straight line all the way through this area. And you can right so, to left or up to down. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. So here's Bowie, our first uh, boss fight. Really not, not that much to say about it, just every time uh, his crown disappears, you bop him on the head and you're done. So here's our first ending. No reason to stand on the lizard's heads afterward, but uh, there's a little bit of swag. Here's one of the skips we were talking about. You can carry that bounce all the way across the, uh, across the screen there and bounce our way halfway into Maze Zone. So that skips about two minutes of climbing. Yeah, it's Pretty the significant. fastest way into this area. It's funny because um, I noticed that you could do it when I was developing it, and then I forgot. And then, like, m way after I released it, somebody figured it out. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, that's a lot of fun. All right, so we're ascending into Palace Zone now. There is a little skip you can do with Bounce Lizard here in Palace Zone. This task does not do it, but... Once it's incorporated into the task, this will be sub-18 minutes, which is very cool. That's a pretty common scenario where new tricks are found all the time, and then the task gets updated, and this already has been obsoleted a couple of times as it is. Yeah, the, uh, the route that we use currently in RTA is actually the same for the task, and it shaved about three minutes off the, uh, the initial time of the task. And that's actually it's something really wanna, cool to see. I want to touch on that really briefly. A lot of times you'll find that the route that's used in the task came from the speedrunning community, and glitches found with task tools are often incorporated into real-time runs. And I love seeing that synergy between the two communities. It's fantastic. Oh, I knew that pun was going to get used. <laughs> I, I forgot <laughs> it was a pun <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> All right, so we're going to skip that checkpoint. 
And here's our uh, second boss. This one's yep. name is Nugent. Do you want to explain the name a little bit? Oh, Nugent, Nugent is named after uh, the mathematician Ramanujan, uh, who was who was. He wrote a lot about continued fractions and other mathematical things. So it's a frog that knows fractions, let's say. So good. All right, so here is where my heart dropped about three or four times when I first watched this run. Um, we're going to be seeing a lot of close calls here. The frog and the fly can hurt you, as well as everything emerging from the frog's eyes, which can actually be prevented from happening if you have the Lizard of Push. The Lizard of Push can push the pink blocks that we've been seeing, like this one right here. And you can push them onto the frog's eyes to keep it from shooting at you. And that's a big help, but it takes a lot longer to get the Push Lizard in order to make that happen. Yeah, I don't think we'll see the Lizard of Push in this run. No, Push and Stone will be left out. Uh, we might as well also explain um, Skipping the checkpoint before the boss, um, that actually has an effect on the route. Um, after you beat a boss, you can return to your last checkpoint, and that, that became incorporated into speedruns because it made for a lot of interesting routing choices. Um, whichever save point you touch last, you could kind of kickstart your, uh, your next entry into the game for the next boss. Yeah, exactly. And you have a lot of options doing it that way as well, because you can either choose to go back to the last boss you fought, or you can go back to the beginning of the game, and you can decide to keep your current lizard or not. So, there's uh, all sorts of combinations that can be used. So the frog has acquired the fly, and we have acquired our second ending. And this is how the test bot do. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a cross-country trek here now, after we acquire the Lizard of Surf. This is the only um, real significant purpose that the Lizard of Surf uses outside of, say, collecting all the coins in the game, of which there are 128. And uh, we're pretty much just going to be going left to right here. Yeah, it's a long way across the world. Um, I forget if we explain, but so like your your character is randomized every time you play, and you can kind of see your hair color when you get out of the lizard. The skin color is randomized. I just wanted it to be like a, a different random player every time. Um, but the way I wrote this, I made it aware that it might be played as a TAS sometime. Uh, so the the random number generator is initialized after the player's appearance is chosen, which I think is unique for an NES game, or maybe any game that's been given a tool as such as speedrun, I'm not sure. It's very smartly designed, and I like that. Even if you're watching a, a pre-made movie in that sense, you still don't know exactly what human you're going to get, which is pretty cool. Alright, so uh, now we have Battletoads 2 here, <laughs> the surf section. This is essentially an auto-scroller, the second of three such uh, auto-scrollers we're going to encounter in the game. Um, just a lot of a lot of rocks, logs, and fish, as well as um, everyone's favorite giant duck who's played this game. Oh yeah, the big the big rubber duck is kind. Of, well, I don't know if if gra graveyards made of rubber, but. That's his name. His name is Graveyard. So for those who are new to Taskbot, this is a uh, this is a, a bot that is playing back the predefined sequence of button presses made by the author of this task, which I believe we've decided is Youth. Youth. Oh, I can't pronounce his name to save my life. Um, <laughs> J U E F. J U E F. I think he's in the chat. Yeah, I think he is actually. <laughs> we are very sorry. If you can tell us how you like your name pronounced, we'll fix it. Um, so uh, this is a tool-assisted speedrun. All of the things you are seeing were done inside of an emulator named FCEUX ahead of time. And what Taskbot does that's different is plays those inputs back on a real console. I've actually got an NES RGB modded console down here that's otherwise completely original. Uh, in fact, you can see the output on this professional video monitor behind me. So what you're seeing here is being done on a real console. And in real time. So here we have um, perhaps the most appropriately named 
boss of this run. This boss's name is Rob. And uh, if you want to go over a little bit about the, uh, the the logic behind the name and the creative process he went through to create these uh, animations, oh, it's an incredibly well, detailed boss. Rob is short for Roboros, the, uh, the world serpent who eats its own tail. I just named it after a famous serpent, I guess. Um, this boss was actually kind of designed around Yar's Revenge, if anyone's played that, for Atari 2600, where you have to, you use your position to line up a missile and then it comes at the boss. Um, I actually worked on a, a sequel to Yar's Revenge, or a remake, I'm not sure what to call it, um, a couple of years ago that came out on Xbox 360. And uh, we differentiated it from the original game by moving the apostrophe over one letter. So it's Yar apostrophe S revenge instead of Yar's apostrophe revenge. Incredibly okay. clever. It looks like we have an answer to how to pronounce J-U-E-F. It's Jueff. I'm oh. glad to finally know how to say that. <laughs> Jueff. The more you know. All right. Heading into Root Zone now. It's going to be a long fall all the way down to acquire the Lizard of Swim, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Lizard of Swim allows you to swim. How many official uh, how many official lizards are there in this game that you're willing to admit to? Uh, the manual lists six lizards. If, if you're observant, you might notice that you're wearing a different lizard than those six when you start the game, which is the Lizard of Knowledge, which isn't really featured in this run, and it seems like it probably seems at first like it's not very useful. Uh, but it knows things. Um, most notably, it can talk to a lot of creatures in this game, who might give helpful hints. It's, but, I would say it's like the, the tutorial lizard. But talking to things isn't fast, so you, you'll never see it in a speedrun. Right. Actually, you do see it at the end of the speedrun. <laughs> this is true, and it is the only time that you'll actually be able to understand anything written on the screen. It is, of course, by design. So here's the swimming section. Um, we're going to skip this checkpoint right here so we can uh, do a little bit of a warp. That's Later actually on, pretty tough. Time. That checkpoint is actually pretty tough to skip. It is. It's done RTA, and it's uh, it it ain't easy. <laughs> it's and usually it's a reset point at higher levels. It was actually funny. Like I had, uh, I for some reason I had a design philosophy of I should make sure you can always skip a save checkpoint. I wasn't sure why. I didn't know how it would be used in speedruns, but I was like, I don't want someone to save, so you should always be able to skip it, maybe <laughs> if you try. That is very kind and smart. Okay, so here's Shaft, the uh, the quadrupus. <laughs> um, oh yeah, feel in, free in to two dimensions. Little... So Shaft only has four legs because it's two dimensions. I think uh, I think in three dimensions you have eight legs. In two dimensions you should have four legs on an octopus. Uh, I would agree. And I'll I'll let you figure out what that means in less or more dimensions. Um, but but. Her name is Shaft because she's a bad mother throwing her eggs at you. I'm not sure how many people know too much about Shaft that would understand that reference, but... <laughs> it's a good one. That's sort of the source of the name. For anyone who's interested in knowing, this was 10,997 re-records in FCEUX made by Jeff. It was a total of 65,146 frames, which makes this movie length one, uh, 18 minutes, 3 seconds, uh, 3.98 seconds. So, uh, And apparently there are improvements that could bring it below 18 now, which is amazing. What's a typical real-time run? Um, usually RTA, you want to shoot for sub-20. That's like a really good time. And that's using all the same routing that this... Uh, Pass does pretty much, except for that one small skip. But that one small skip isn't always used in RTA either. I personally don't go for it because it's a lot of time loss if you miss it for only a few seconds of gain. Yeah, I think there are 
there are quite a few options for for routing it and especially if you're trying to do like a marathon thing where you want to have kind of some safety checkpoints uh there are a lot of different ways to kind of decide where to put those in yeah and right now we are wearing the lizard of heat that's going to come in handy for quick killing a boss toward the end um, this is the only time I remember us straight up stopping in this run, just to wait for that little, uh, little lettuce. <laughs> oh. I liked it when people started calling that creature the walking lettuce. <laughs> this level is kind of dark, by the way. It is. I'll explain a little bit about the, um, the duality of this world shortly, but first I want to mention that, uh, these three raccoons' names are Windy, Rocky, and Blaze. And I could have sworn that was an Earth, Wind, and Fire vestments, given that uh, the cat's name was Bowie. But, you know, in, in you know, retroactively, it can certainly be considered yeah, as such. I actually didn't intend that reference, but it worked out really well, so <laughs> I like it. It did. So, um... Oh yeah, we don't uh, collect any coins in this run either, which is, uh, it's not necessary to avoid all coins, but it's something fun. So that was Mountain Zone for about 10 seconds, and here is a quick kill. <laughs> Pretty much just um, hold B and blow fire on the rabbit. This is actually the last normal boss of the run. So if you want to explain really quickly about the... um. The na kind of the nature of the world of Lizard and how you can switch between, uh, would you call it like the heads and tails of the world? Yeah, so like I, well, I called it Recto Inverso. That's sort of names for, um, like old books. That's the right side and the left side of the page. Um, so it's supposed to be two sides of a page, which means when you go through a door in this game, you end up on the other side of the world, but the world is flipped because the page has been flipped over. Um, so there's a mountain on one side that's snowy, and on the other side is the volcano. Um, but other areas where you go through a door, there's always a corresponding thing on the other side that's kind of related to it. And that's brilliant with the, um, the book page analogy. I've never thought of it that way. Actually, you see, you see the book here flipping over, and you'll see the night side and the day side. Which is now I get it. an analog to the world out there. I didn't catch that the first time through. I didn't catch that the 20th time through. <laughs> okay, so here we have a, a sort of a, I guess you could call it, um, Yoku blocks, in a sense. It's a little bit like that. Yeah, basically have a series of cycles. This is the third um, auto-scroller, by the way, of the run. And uh, it's it's enough to give me a little bit of PTSD as a runner of this game because I can't tell you how many times I've missed one jump and lost the whole run here. It's a uh, it's pretty uh, pretty high octane. You can see the and button presses again. on the controller where the back and forth gets kind of obscene <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> it's so good. The lizard of two heads. So after a little bit of an expose here about, you know, what's going on, you uh, are eventually able to choose between two endings. One is if, and only if, you have the Lizard of Knowledge, which we do in this case. And you're able to read from the book that's being flipped here. And your other option is to ascend, which is to say, go through another one of those little boss portals and touch a crystal become the Lizard of Beyond. Is that a NetHack reference? Oh, no. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Ascending, but don't reference. worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, I just thought ascending sounded, you know, like a way to end something. And that's time. <laughs> that is time. Right? That was 18 yeah. minutes and, let's see, three seconds, I believe. By, uh, yeah. 18 seconds? And here are all the randomly generated friends that you meet along the way. Ah, they're random too. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I would like to thank you guys, first of all, for providing commentary. Uh, this has been an awesome run. This has been a really fun game to play with. I've done a, a previous run through of an earlier task uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, if you are interested in seeing more tool assisted speedruns, I am the ambassador for TAS Videos. I'd love for you to come join our community. You can come on over to taskvideos.org. You'll find this run and many others that are amazing, just like it. If you have interest in TaskBot, like this guy here, if you have interest in TaskBot, come on over to discord.task.bot. We're an amazing community. You can even get your own replay device if you are interested in playing back runs on your own console. Cable is always going to be a challenge, but it's always fun. Uh, I'd like to again thank Winterbit and Rain Warrior for joining me on commentary. And unless you two have anything else to say, I think I'm going to close this out. Uh, well, I just want to say that I think the um, the book ending is the the good ending because you get to read all the lore, see about the all the creatures you met, see what they're called, and all the locations. I just think it's a it's a really cool way to end any any game where you get a little bit of expose, kind of Super Mario World style. And it, it is just... It, I mean, I, I have to say Brad pretty much thought of everything here. And I, I really appreciate the attention to detail paid in like every respect in this game. This is a great representation of the NES homebrew and indie dev community, which has really experienced a resurgence in the last few years. And I feel like this game kind of, in a way, um, spearheaded that. And inspired a lot of people to make their own NES games. So uh, I implore you to get out there, check out some of the NES games that are being made these days, like in the last handful of years, because there are a lot of great devs out there with a lot of great ideas. Absolutely. I'm going to actually plug this game. You can get this specific game. You can find Lizard at lizardnes.com. Am I correct on that address, Brad? Yep, that's it. Um... And, and thanks very much for those kind words, Winterbit. And uh, thanks so much for demonstrating my game. It's it's great to see it played like this. Absolutely. <laughs> it's an unusual way. Well, thank you again. If you want to be part of the TaskBot community, come on over to discord.task.bot. Uh, that's the best place to find us, or just task.bot. And uh, feel free to swing by my Twitch channel. I do this kind of content all the time. I am DuangoAC. You can find me at twitch.tv slash DuangoAC. With that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Thank you.